Hi everyone, this is ECU Boot and uh, for today's videos, well, we're going to be showing you how to uh, measure the um, uh, boost pressure, control pressure transducer on this uh, uh, M274 engines on this Mercedes E200. Alright, so we're here to talk about the engines that no one really wants to talk about But we just see it popping up in just about every model What I like to call the uh, Mercedes Volkswagen 2 liter turbo This is a uh, 2 liter 4 cylinder engine that Mercedes introduced uh, Very high feature engines So we're talking uh, turbo charging, direct injected We've got variable cam timing um, All aluminum for the block and head just something you typically don't see for all Mercedes Normally you're accustomed to see V6 or V8 or V12 Things are changing, engines are downsizing Mercedes is embracing a uh, more modern way um, to construct engines So, whether you like it or not These 2 liter 4 cylinder engines are definitely here to stay We're seeing them offered in every model Similar to what I mentioned SLK, E-Class, C-Class GLC and even the variants of Transverse are based on this M274 motors. So, because it's here to stay, we're gonna go over the uh, probably the most important factors that make this engine more powerful, and it's uh, definitely the uh, turbocharger. Speaking of the turbocharger, sits on the present JV engines. This particular turbocharger is an integrated unit where the exhaust manifold and turbo are single assembly um, not really much trouble on this unit sometimes the vacuum system does give issues and you're going to get boost code for that um, where there's uh, no boost being supplied at all unfortunately the control system for these turbochargers are not available separately sometimes you might end up replacing the entire turbocharger assembly so the cylinder charging efficiency is improved as a result of force inductions and this raises the engine torque and engine power. The fuel quantity corresponding to the increased air mass is measured by the MA control unit N3 sus 10. Um, during forces inductions, the flow energy of exhaust gases is used to drive the ATL. The ATL suctions in fresh air through the air filter on the compactor inlet and fits it through the compressor outlet into the charge air pipe upstream of the charge air cooler. The um, high speed of the compressor impeller and the resultant high volumetric flow rate compacts the air in the charge air pipe. The maximum boost pressure here is approximately 0.7 uh, to 1.5 bar depending on the engine variant. Now the noise dampers on the compressor outlet dampens the charge pressure fluctuations and thus associated flow noises which occurs for rapid changes in engine speed. And the compressor charge air flows via the charge air pipe to the charge air cooler. This finally cools the air which was heated by the compressions and leads it over the charge air pipe to the charge air distributors. So um, the function sequence is div divided into two uh, sub-functions. The first one is the function sequence for boost pressure control and the second one is for the high pass air. So first of all we're going to talk about the function sequence for the boost pressure control. The boost pressure control occurs electromagnetically via the uh, boost pressure control pressure transducer and the pressure tra transducer is actuated dependent on the characteristic map and the load by the ME control unit for the purpose of boost pressure control. In order to do this, uh, the uh, ME control unit evaluates the following sensor and functions of the engine management. Uh, the charge air temperature sensor upstream and downstream of throttle valve. The pressure sensor um, upstream and downstream of throttle valve, the boost pressure, the uh, pressure sensor downstream of the air filter, the intake pressure, and the accelerator pedal sensor, the, um, uh, the load request made by driver. And finally is the crankshaft hot sensor to uh, calculate the engine's RPM. So in wide open throttle operations, the maximum boost pressure builds up, and in order to reduce the boost pressure, the exhaust flows for driving the charge, charge the turbine is diverted via the uh, bypass by opening the boost pressure control flap. Now to do this, the uh, boost pressure control pressure transducer actuates the uh, boost pressure control flap vacuum unit using boost pressure from the vacuum reservoir in the charge air distributor. Uh, the vacuum unit then opens the boost pressure control flap over a linkage which closes the bypass. Now the boost pressure control flap allows the exhaust flows to bypass the turbine wheel 
uh, whereby the boost pressure is controlled and the speed of the turbine wheels is limited. So what it means is that uh, the boost pressure of a maximum of uh, 0.7 to 1.5 bar, depending on the engine variant, can be adapted to the current load requirements of the engines. Now, to monitor the current boost pressure, the pressure sensor upstream of the throttle valve sends the corresponding voltage signal to the ME control unit. Then, the pressure sensor downstream of the air filter, which is located in the air intake touch upstream of the ATL, is used by the ME control unit to monitor charging. And finally, the charge air temperature is detected in the charge air distributor by the charge air temperature sensor downstream of the throttle valve and sent to the ME control unit as a voltage signal. So, moving on to the function sequence for the bypass air. The ATL continues turning for a period of time after the start of the acceleration mode due to uh, the inertia of the shaft, compressor, and the turbine wheel. In the case of rapid closing of the throttle valve, the charge pressure wave therefore runs back to the ATL. This charge pressure waves would create a condition with a low delivery volume and high pressure conditions at a compressor impeller, which causes uh, the charger pumping. Um, opening the bypass air switch over valve prevents this through rapid depressurization to a bypass in the intake side of the ATL. Uh, so now, in load operations of the engines, the bypass is kept closed by means of the diagram under boost pressure. If the engine is switched off, the diaphragm is pressed into the seat by the spring integrated into the deceleration air switchover valve. If the ME control unit detects the actual values poten potential meters 1 and 2, that the throttle valve has closed and therefore deceleration mode is active, the bypass air switchover valve is actuated. Uh, now the diaphragm is pulled open against the spring force and boost pressure and opens the bypass nut to the intake side. The excess boost pressure is thereby relieved. Uh, so the, if, the, if the engine changes from deceleration mode to load operations, the bypass air switch over valve is no longer actuated. Uh, now the spring presses the diaphragm in the direction of the seat. Um, there, the diaphragm is pulled into the seat by the prevailing boost pressure and thus um, close the bypass nut again. Um, so how about the electrical wiring diagram? So we're gonna um, uh, choose it. Um, when diagram for gasoline engines. Okay, now we're gonna find our boost pressure control transducer. Um, okay, there we go. So uh, the Y31 slash 5 is our boost pressure control pressure transducer. It will have two wires. One is the um, uh, ground signal um, coming out from our ME control unit, and the other line is our um, um, circuit uh, 87s. So the next step, I'm going to hook up my uh, oscilloscope to this uh, transducer to see the, um, the ground signals coming from our ME control unit. So what you're seeing now is uh, the location uh, for the uh, boost pressure control uh, pressure transducer. Uh, it, you can obviously see there's two wires. One is for the uh, uh, 87 circuit and the other one is from the uh, ground ground signal from the control unit. So you're gonna take a look at the screen while I'm starting up the engines and um, you shall see the difference um, uh, at the uh, waveform. So I'm uh, jumping on the car to give it a little, a little acceleration and you shall see uh, the width of the pool is getting bigger. Okay, so you can see that uh, the, uh, the width of the pool is getting bigger. Uh, so this happens because um, when we're acceleration, um, uh, the uh, ME control units do this to uh, protect our uh, turbocharger. So in conclusion, today's videos, I will be showing you how the boost pressure works, as well as the uh, electrical wiring diagram for the transducer. And moreover, I'll show you the uh, method to uh, measuring the uh, waveform for the uh, ground signal from the transducer. And um, I hope you learn a lot from these videos. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us and we will help you as much as we can. Uh, till then, uh, we will hope you enjoyed today's videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.